two years ago, Jesus started to peel back a portion of his scripture like layers of an onion, distilling it down to the very essence of what he was trying to communicate to me. And that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Many of us, when we pick up this holy book, this guidebook for life God's given us, when we think about the beginning, we're gonna turn somewhere in here. The first of 66 books is called Genesis, and you might have even heard before that it can be translated beginnings. And so, of course, we assume that the beginning of this book is when you open up the cover and go to the first one in this collection. But actually, this is how Genesis 1-1 goes. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1-1 is the story of the beginning of man. But in John chapter 1, we see the beginning of the story of the God with no beginning. This is how it goes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and His life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light. He was not the light, but came as a witness to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And he was in the world, and the world was made through him, but the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this is he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. And over the last two years, as I started to meditate and ruminate upon this scripture that he's given us, the complexity of it started to become simplified. And he started to show me how he was going to apply this to my life and to my family and my team's life in a unique way. And I believe your life today into one sentence that he gave me that I think is so important. We all need to see a living, breathing Jesus. I do, and you do too. We all need to see every day a living, breathing Jesus. That might sound really strange to you, but I think that's what this passage is saying to us today. I think that's what Jesus is saying. If you're not over 2,000 years old, of course you missed the opportunity uh, along with me to not be around for that short 33 year lifespan where Jesus was actually physically walking the earth in the, the same flesh that he put on similarly to that which we live today in our human bodies. He came from heaven, lived a perfect sinless life over 33 years and showed us exactly how we're supposed to live before he went to the cross to die a substitutionary death, giving us the atonement to pay for the sins and the debt with which we owed to God because of our sin. Ascending to heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father where he is interceding or praying for you and for me today that we might understand the gravity of his love for us, that we might understand that every single person every day needs to see a living, breathing Jesus. But we don't just need to see a living, breathing Jesus. We need to be a living, breathing Jesus. And as I said, 2,000 years later in 2021, here we sit. And how can we see a living, breathing Jesus? In his followers. We see Jesus in one another as we're pursuing him and he dwells in our hearts through faith, like it says in his word. So how do we see that? How do we be that? As we look at this gospel of John in chapter one that I've just read to us, we see so much love, 
God is love and that's how we can see his presence in our hearts. How do we see and be Jesus? Like this, it says that he created us, he created all things, all of this around us, this beautiful creation in nature and the most beautiful, his prized creation is those he made in his very image, you and I. He put dreams in your heart and purposes in your life that we might live according to his will and absolutely blossom in this life as we think about the consequences and the gravity of the next along with that. So we're to love in the following ways. Obviously we can't create people, only God can and he shows his love in that. But he also loves us by being light. It says he shines light in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. That his life, his very presence was the light of men. It's this light that we're meant to exude and to shine in the darkness of the world today, that we might see the way and the truth and the life, the very life of Jesus the Christ, the hope for all the world. We're supposed to love also because it says He left heaven and dwelt among us. He gave up absolute perfection and beauty and holiness and glory and honor and He gave up His throne and put on the likeness of sinful, flawed flesh to be among us. And He didn't just do that, it says He reclined at table with tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes and people despised and thrown out by society. And the religious people that you would think He came to appease and to just make them all happy and, and have a good perception of him, he threw them to the side. And instead he hung out with us when we we're at our worst. It's this aspect of dwelling in which God shows his heart for me and for you and calls us to do likewise, to be Jesus, that people might see a living, breathing Jesus every day through shining light into the darkness by dwelling with people, no matter where they're at right now with Jesus. And finally, he answered life's biggest questions. Why am I here? For what purpose? And is there a God? And if so, does he care at all about me? It says no one's ever seen God, but he has made him known. So that's what I see in this passage that we all need to see a living, breathing Jesus. At Traveler's Church, our vision statement is connecting Jesus to your journey. Connecting Jesus to every journey. I need to be connected to him every day and so do you. That's why actually we moved to Pittsburgh uh, this past year in 2020, specifically because God wanted to start Traveler's Church and he told us, I wanna partner with you as we do this. Our family's not complete, we're missing a lot of people and we know that God has positioned people just like you in Pittsburgh to see this dream become a reality. We're not just preaching and walking off a stage, we're dwelling together as we follow Jesus together. And whether you find yourself in one of the following two camps, maybe one of those people you said, I'm not really sure if Jesus would wanna dwell with me. I'm in the middle of my mess. And in this same spot, I wanna remind you that that's exactly when God reaches down in love and says, I care and I'm ready to spend time with you. Whether you find yourself there, or maybe whether you find yourself already journeying with Jesus, maybe you already know him, but you haven't really found fulfillment walking with a group of other people doing the same, uh, at least the best that we can anyhow. And maybe you're curious about how to live like I'm talking about today, incarnationally, that is Jesus inside of us, and missionally, that means outward face, letting him live out from us as well. Maybe you've not quite found a rhythm in that or a community to walk with. Whether you find yourself in either of these places, we believe Traveler's Church is for you. We have been praying for you diligently, fervently, and we know and are so excited to see Jesus build his church through you.